Hey, I'm John Cannell, and today on Preppy Kitchen, we're making easy, delicious oatmeal banana muffins. So let's get started. First thing, set that oven to 375. It needs to be nice and toasty, and these guys come together in no time at all. In fact, they're actually so easy that my kids love making this as well. Get two bananas. They should look like this, not for eating, only for baking. If you have those like yellow green bananas that aren't ripe at all, you can still use those. Pop them onto a baking sheet, bake at 350 or even 375 until they're blackened. It's about 10 minutes. Then you'll mush them up and use them just like normal. When you're using banana in a recipe, you actually kind of want to be exact-ish. Like some bananas are tiny little baby bananas. Some are gigantic. So I like to mash my bananas into a measuring cup. It gives me an exact result. Everything comes out just that much better. Your bananas are adding flavor and texture. There's a ton of water in here. It just makes everything moist and amazing without being oily and greasy. Let's see if two will do it or if I need a little bit more. If you add too much banana, it's too much moisture and they can be kind of gummy and collapse and be like underbaked in the middle. So it's really better just to do one extra step of measuring things out correctly. Even though my mother would never do this, she would just toss things in. She doesn't like measuring at all, but it always works out for her. She's lucky. So close, I'm gonna add another half banana in just so I can be right at the one cup mark. Also, if you add a little bit less banana than you should, you're not gonna get the 12 muffins. I'm just gonna tell you right now. <laughs> so it'll still be delicious. You'll still like, enjoy the recipe, but you might have one or even two muffins less. That looks great. I'm setting this aside and now it's time to get our dry ingredients. But first, why not put your muffin papers in? You don't have to use muffin papers. You could just spray your baking dish, but that's a recipe for heartache in my opinion. It's time for our dry ingredients, starting with one and a half cups or 180 grams of all-purpose flour. I also want one and a half cups of old-fashioned oats. These are gonna give you a wonderful chew and some body and substance. It also means that you can add this into your kid's lunch. They'll have a wonderful snack they enjoy, but it's still a good source of fiber and everything else. 150 grams, one and a half cups. I also want two thirds of a cup of granulated sugar, 133 grams. I get a ton of questions about sugar in baked goods, so I want to go over it really quickly because it's so important. Sugar is doing two jobs. One, it's sweetening things up, so it's delicious, but it's also giving you a soft, tender crumb. That melt in your mouth texture actually comes from the sugar. Just like when you add lemon juice to a cake and the acid interferes with the coagulation of the egg protein there, the sugar is doing the same thing. So it's making weaker bonds between the egg and the flour and giving you that soft melt in your mouth crumb. I swear, I love these little canisters, but they look exactly the same. I'm like, which one is it? One and a half teaspoons of baking powder and half a teaspoon of baking soda. That only took me half an hour. Ah. I'm also using half a teaspoon of salt. And finally, one teaspoon of cinnamon. I will say you could use any spice you enjoy. If you like nutmeg, have at it. Cardamom, whatever you want. Scale is done. Grab a whisk. We're gonna whisk this up. Cinnamon and oats is like a match made in heaven. And I said it earlier, but like I love to put these in Lachlan and George's lunch bags as like their lunch snack treat situation. And they really keep them full because of the banana and the oats. That's all mixed up. In a medium bowl, we're gonna whisk together a couple of delicious ingredients, starting with two thirds of a cup of milk. If you're not a milk fan, you could use almond milk, soy milk, whatever you like. I'm also adding in a third of a cup of veggie oil. This gives you so much softness without having to worry about them coming out of the fridge and being hard. Butter and veggie oil, they're both fats, but the benefit of the oil is that you can put them in the fridge, they'll come out and they'll be super soft right away. A lot of butter-based desserts just need to um, come to room temperature, which can be a pain. One teaspoon of vanilla will go a long way, so add that in. Two eggs, and eggs here are our binding agent. They're gonna hold everything together. The yolk gives you some more richness too. If you don't wanna use the egg, you actually don't have to. You could add in about a quarter cup extra of banana or so, because banana is also a binding agent in addition to it giving you that wonderful moisture. There's a lot of egg alternatives I get asked about. Banana's a great one. You could use applesauce sometimes and uh, flaxseed. If you uh, grind it up and you soak it in water, really, really like goopy, gluey, and it mimics the texture of egg whites. If you want me to do a whole video on egg substitutions, you let me know in the comments. It'll take some planning, but it could be really fun. Now I'm adding in my mushed banana. I'm gonna whisk this up just so it's incorporated. I kind of like the texture of some of the chunks, so I'm not gonna totally just puree it, but I do want to get it well distributed. 
And if you like things totally smooth, just mush the banana extra long. All right, I just saw some like mega chunks in here. You don't want the pieces that big. So just squish them up with your whisk if you see them. And now we can combine the wet and the dry. And I should say, if you really don't like using veggie oil, you could use olive oil for this. You could use grapeseed oil, avocado oil. You could even use butter, it just melts it up and it'll taste delicious. I grabbed a spatula because one of my pet peeves is over mixing any kind of like a cakey batter. When you do that, you're gonna activate the gluten. Everything is gonna be just a little gummy and meh. And especially if you're adding banana, which can make things denser, you just don't wanna over mix the batter. Half a cup of chocolate chips is totally optional, but the kids will go bananas for them. I'm here all day. You could also add in some toasted walnuts or pecans or anything else that you really enjoy. The batter is almost mixed in, so now I'm gonna add my half a cup of chocolate chips in. There you go. If you wanna go extra dark and use bittersweet chocolate, go ahead, but any kind will work. Just fold that in to distribute, and as we fold, we're gonna finish mixing up so there's no more streaks of flour left. Grab your muffin tin. One of my pet peeves in any muffin recipe is when they don't tell you how much batter to put in. It drives me crazy. You're gonna fill these up almost all the way to the top. They should be fairly full. Using my triggered scoop, this is about a third of a cup. My dream is to do this without spilling. The triggered scoop really helps though. So divide the batter evenly. They should be very full, but if you mismeasured your banana, I will tell you, you might have a little bit less batter. Look how full and amazing these are. These muffins will last in an airtight container for four to five days, or you can freeze them for up to a month for maximum freshness. It's a really easy like grab and go snack. And the nice thing about baking at a high temperature for muffins is that you're gonna get a dome. So dome up and have that amazing muffin top. It works because the high temperature is setting the edges quickly and then the top is coming up but the edge is set. If it's a low temperature, it bakes evenly and you have a flat layer. So sometimes for cupcakes, I really like to have a flat top because it's nice for decorating, but for muffins, I always want that height. Evenly distributed, basically completely full to the top. And now you can finish these off in a couple different ways. Toss some oats on top like this, a little sprinkle. You could add some sugar, you could add cinnamon sugar, you could even do a crumble topping. So basically like an oat-based streusel topping, which would be nice as well. If you want, you could add a few chocolate chips on top. I'll do that just to show you what it looks like, but I like these to just look like OD banana muffins with a hidden chocolate surprise. But for you, I'll give you some extra chocolate chips on top of one. These guys are ready to go into the oven, 375 for 18 to 22 minutes. It really depends on your oven. I will say they should be firm on top. So if they're a little bit soft in the middle, they're gonna be underdone and sink and be gummy and meh. You don't want that. So make sure they have a little bit of a spring back or you can use a skewer to test the center. These are all beautiful. The one top of chocolate chips might be extra striking. Just gonna say. Lachlan and George are about to sink their teeth into these for an afternoon snack. What? I had to have a bite first. That is so delicious. Tons of banana flavor, a little kiss of chocolate that's optional and the chewiness of the oats all come together for a perfect snack. I hope you get a chance to try this recipe, and if you like this video, check out my muffin playlist.